Well done! Yay! Done. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone! Kay here and Alfie's not here. No, it's me tonight, Ella. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell mother and daughter, can't you? Look, we've got the same smile. <laughs> So what are we doing tonight? Hmm? What are we doing tonight, Ella? We're doing the birdhouse kit from our magazine seven. Brilliant. But I'm going to demo it differently to what Kerry's done because yeah. Kerry's done it in here. She's done an amazing job. It's absolutely beautiful. And um, she's got given you all the directions of how to actually make it in our number seven indigo blue box kit magazine she's gorgeous loads of lovely techniques it's just really cool and she's decorated all the inside i don't know whether you can see that oh should we turn the light on it might help where's the light switch there it is <laughs> hey. hey that might help oh you can just see on the inside it's beautifully decorated gorgeous so this is what Carrie Sturman's done she does loads of work along with the rest of our design team on I Love Indigo Blue and the Indigo Blue Facebook page so all the step-by-steps are in here for that which is our magazine box kit which we launched last week thank you so much for all the people who've ordered this and have already received it thank you thank you thank you we really appreciate each and every one uh, of them that you've bought so thank you and thanks to Ella who sent them all out <laughs> a little bit of help with Marella but yeah. basically Ella sent them all out <laughs> okay so I just wanted to um, show you some more samples that our design team did so thank you so much girls you did an amazing job um, before I do that I'll very very quickly for the people who haven't seen it yet um, what you actually get is um, obviously the magazine there is in the middle these beautiful lovely pa papers and these are printed on a different paper they are on a beautiful matte paper they're double-sided and you get 18 double-sided ones so that's 32 in total so those are absolutely gorgeous you also get a lovely beautiful set of A4 stamps which are just gorgeous um, you've got lots to play with there beautiful backgrounds beautiful hero stamps um, lovely birds there's loads on that so it's an A4 sheet you also get a four in one stencil as well this is just to die for this is six by six inches in size so loads to play with there you also get this gorgeous die set as well so there's two dies in here so um you get an outie and an innie as it as it were but that is just beautiful love it and finally you get some stickers as well so lots of um easy to use stickers for adding to your journal pages and your cards so that's what you get in the box kit and i wanted to show you some of these that are dtb have made so um lorna angwin thank you so much leslie blaymeyer wendy wallace Carolyn Lakin, Sue J. Cub, and I've said Lorna, haven't I? And Kerry Sturman. Thank you so much. These are just beautiful. This one um, is one that I didn't show last week. This one's actually from Marta, and this is actually in the magazine. So that is just gorgeous texture, texture coming through. And um, this is also Marta's as well. So these are all martyrs. So I do apologise for not showing these last week. I think because they were all in this box here. But these are all in the um, magazine of martyrs. And this is Nikki Gilbert's. Now this one, <laughs> what's that? You were like off. Where I was I? <laughs> it's because I'm looking <laughs> behind me. There we go. There we go. Because I'm looking for the next one. This is so lovely. It's got a little tea bag in the front there, 
and it's a lovely little folder Wendy did as well one. Wendy did do this one which is gorgeous covered in um, the papers that you get in the magazine and in there are some little chocolate biscuits which is just gorgeous that one's not in the magazine but it's she not. did do a post about it today and in the comments she's written how she's done it oh fantastic well done who's this by Ella is that Wendy's as well? I think it yeah. might be. That's lovely. And I love the fact that she's used, you know, lollipop sticks or um, those wooden stirrers, mm. which are gorgeous. That's so pretty. I love the garden gate. It's really lovely. And then we have another by Wendy. I love the uh, hessian there. And look at the rope at the bottom. Gorgeous. Let me try and get the uh, angle there. There we go. You can see that beautiful background as well and then we have do you know who this one's from ella i can't see wendy it. oh it is wendy there we go and that's got some beautiful um stamping on the background oh no that's actually the papers and then she stamped and embossed with the uh, ultra fine gold embossing powder which is really lovely and then we've got one by sue jacob there we go. <laughs> That's better. You can see that there. Again, it's so simple, but so elegant and beautiful. I love the colour. I love that sort of magenta pink, which is beautiful. And then we've got another by um, Sue Jacob. Here we go. Isn't that gorgeous? I love tax. And that is really, really sweet. That's beautiful. And then we have another by Sue. And come back a little bit. There we go. So you can see that. But look at all that detail. I love all that layered texture. It's just beautiful. Are you going to eat those biscuits? Yeah, I didn't realise they were biscuits actually. Did you know? No. Did you? Uh -huh. Look at this baby. This is That's beautiful. Up. This is stunning. Look, um, she's got a frame there and she's done lots of 3D work. As you can see, and let me come in close so that you can see all that it's lovely detail. It's actually the bottom of a chocolate box as well. It is, it's That's really so clever, clever, isn't it? Yeah. Well, she's a crafter, you see. We use all sorts, don't we? Yeah. That is beautiful. Absolutely stunning. And then we have a shell as well. Very clever to use that. That's nice as a trinket box, isn't it? Mm. So those are the ones that we didn't have time to show last week. Are you going to save that so you can yes. have the chocolate biscuit later? I think you deserve it, actually. <laughs> Just looking at some comments. So we've got Paula from the USA. Hi, Paula. And it's her first time live with us and first time ordering. So thank oh, you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that we've heard on the news that there's some um, wildfires in Canada again. And um, our hearts go out to you and I really hope you're all safe. And um, yeah, what can we say really? It's tragic. So um, lots of love to you all there. And um, yeah, I hope they get it under control quickly for you. So thank you. Right. Um, hi, Jenny. I can't read them for and my then, glasses, I'll let you yeah, read them. Yeah, Paula found us from Chris Stokes. Um, yeah, Chris came to our retreat and she mm -hmm. used our products on her videos, so that's fab. Um, yeah, hi everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so should we start on our uh, bird cage then? Bird, bird house. Cage. House. Bird house. <laughs> house. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, I'm going to go this way and Elle's, Elle's going to swap over the camera. See you in a moment. There we go. So it comes flat packed and it's made out of medite. So um, be careful because there's a little piece of doweling separate in here so don't lose that you need that because that's going to go in the front of the um, birdhouse here there you go you can see it there which the little bird sits on all right so don't don't forget to um, keep that safe all right and all you need to do is just pop all of these out in fact here we go I've already popped these out so you end up with all these lovely bits. It's 
So this is, um, as I said, this is Medite, which means that it's MDF, but it's a, like a greener um, type of Medite. And you get all these tiny little squares which come out of the um, picket fence. So you don't actually need those unless you want to uh, decorate um, the side of the house or some other item like these. You could have them layered over these if you wanted to but I'm not going to I'm just going to put those back in my box okay so I'm just going to go through all the different shapes and what they are first of all so the first thing is that we've got the back of the house here and then we've also got the front of the house which is this one with the hole in and that's the one where the dowling rod goes we're not going to put it in yet but that's where the dowling rod fits in which is there so that's where that goes we've also got um, a side of the house and another side of the house okay and these are the windows where the window frames go on top of those so there you go two window frames we've also got two picket fences so those can go on the side of the house or you can decide to put them on the front of the house whichever way you want to go with that we've also got two pieces like this which are the roof so those are going to fit together at a right angle and those are the roof okay and you can tell because it's got this lovely edge here we've also got these are the bits that come out of the window so you don't actually need those unless you want to add them on but we've got these two pieces here now these could act as either window boxes like this or they could go as um, lintels over the top so whichever way you want to put them then we have our little birdie which is going to go on there on the dowling piece and we also have the base which is just this rectangle this plain rectangle so this is what everything sits on and then you will have a circle and this was designed to go on there although you don't have to put it there you can put it wherever you like and that's been popped out of this here so if you wanted to use this you could you could put that on the back of the house if you wanted and then you've also got this which can go either on the front or the back of the house again completely up to you and then you've got these um, circles one has come out of this here and if you wanted you could put it in there or you could fill up this hole here and just have a nice little design going on there these are waste areas but you can do whatever you want with it okay i mean i've actually got um a piece left over from another kit it's a little flirtedly and i'm going to put mine in here so if you've got any added extras you can always do that as well uh, and likewise if you wanted to put something on the back of the house you could do that as well all right so those are all your pieces so let me just move all these out of the way so the first thing I, I do is I actually gesso everything so uh, the reason why I laboriously gesso everything is so that you seal all these cut edges okay and you seal the front and back now this is um, uh, marine um, MDF so it's brilliant for construction but I always put a coat of gesso on because it actually seals everything in and you get um, your paint goes on better your glue doesn't soak in you get a much better finish and it's worth taking the time to do that a quick way of doing it is just to put on a pair of gloves get yourself a kitchen sponge and just wipe all over it and it will be done in no time so I always use a gesso now I've got black gesso um, 
I don't know why I picked up the black rather than the whites, but I think, um, oh, I do know why, because I wanted to have black in between the lines of the bricks here. So I wanted like the mortar to look black. So that's why I chose black. Okay. Um, you might have got the kit with three of the stencils in as well. So you can buy these separately, but these were designed to go specifically with the house. Now, unfortunately, I haven't used this one today. I wish I had now, um, but I didn't. So, um, and this is for the roof, the roof tiles, and these are obviously the bricks. So you can buy these separately as well, but they were designed specifically for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is before I even, before I even gesso this, I'm actually going to um, do some stenciling because I want some lovely texture paste on these. So in fact, I'll just use a big one and I'm going to use my bricks and I'm going to use some true grit texture paste so this has got pumice in it so it's absolutely gorgeous and it will show um, hold its shape beautifully now if you wish you can just take this down this here and I always use my knife so I get it on the bottom of the knife as you can see and then I hold it at a 45 degree angle and I spread it like I'm just spreading a thick layer of butter on toast okay so as simple as that and then I just lift up the stencil and pull that away there we go and just make sure that you just pull off any additional bits of paste off the side. Now, if you're sensible, you'll leave that to dry before you do the next bit. But I'm always really, really impatient and lazy. So I'm just going to line that up. And I know that it's going to squash it a bit, but I'm not going to bother about worry about that because when it's painted you're not going to really see that so I'm just going to go ahead and and do the top bit as well and see it has smushed it that's the technical term smushing but again I'm not really bothered about that I've missed a bit of the top so I'm just going to pop that in there and just do an odd little bit at the top but it looks great doesn't it now you don't have to do the whole thing because um i did notice kerry only did a section and it looked brilliant so it might be that you just do a section of um of your stenciling you don't want bricks all over so um just go ahead and do that when you've done this you really need to wash your stencil straight away because it's not going to come off that stencil if you don't wash it it's it's going to go hard and it could alter the shape of your stencil in the you know the shape of the bricks so i've given that a good scrape and then i'm just going to put this in a bucket of water there we go that will need that later on so then we need our roof piece. So just putting that somewhere to dry. It's quite warm in here and I've put my oil filled radiator on and I've just placed it on there. So it's going to um, be really, really quick to dry. So this one, this fits perfectly with these here. Okay, so you can go right to the very, very edge or you can pull it up a little bit depending on what sort of look you want. I went right to the edge. It's all right, we can't hear you eating your um, chocolate. What is it? Jaffa cake. Jaffa cake bar. 
I noticed you didn't get me one. No. <laughs> Watch this. Can I have a bite? No. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> Mine. Mine. <laughs> Ella's always been the same, but when it comes to chocolate, <laughs> she doesn't do sharing. No. <laughs> okay, so I've got it right to the very edge. And again, I'm just going to do the roof in exactly the same way. So if you want to just do a section of it, you know, you can do. But I want to do all of it. And can you see how I'm making quite a mess of it? That doesn't matter at all. So I'll just put all these on. Because what we're going to do is we're going to um, gesso this and then we're going to further decorate it. Okay, so again, lift it up from the bottom and then pull that hinge off. There we go. And then just take off the excess from the edges. And then I'm just going to clean up this bit at the bottom, which I obviously have put far too much on, but that's fine. Okay. And again, leave it to dry before you do the next bit, but as I said earlier, I'm far too impatient for that, so I'm just going to go for it. And I just slap it on there. There we go. And I know I get a line across there, but once I've decorated it, you are not going to see that. So again, this goes into the tub of water straight away. Let me just clean this up. So just make sure that you clean round the edge of your jar. Because it will, it will dry and get and get stuck and then top on and then what I do is I give it a wrap which means that it all just jumps to the bottom and it stays level so you don't get any bits at the top which dry out okay right so let's just pop that on to dry turn that over and then the next thing we do is make sure that you gesso it with black gesso. Can you see? I've just got black gesso all over that. And I've got black gesso all over that. So I've done my two roof pieces and I've also done my four side pieces as well. Okay. So the next stage, once you've done that, if you want, is to decorate the inside. So I've actually painted mine and I've used pheasant bronze metallic paint because I'm going to actually have my roof come off so that it acts as a box so that I can put, you know, pencils, pens, um, trinkets in, ephemera, that sort of thing. Um, so so weird on camera, it looks like Goldfinger. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, if you, you do go. that, there yeah. you go. You can see that it's actually a lovely deep bronze yeah. metallic. So, and that, that's the beauty of metallic paint, that you get that lovely reflection of it. So that's what I did next. I actually did all of the inside pieces next. I painted all of those and I even painted the edging as well. So I've done that in blue because that's one of the colours that I'm going to be using for the front. OK, so I've just done all of that because when we actually construct it and put it all together, you will actually see the edges. So that's why I like to have a, a nice finish on them. OK, let me take that off because I don't, I don't need that on. Mind you, I will get covered in paint. So, OK, so let me just put that to one side. And the colours I've chosen are Townhouse Teal and Sing the Blues. And I'm actually using... 
opaque matte paint here. All right, we'll take that off. So rather than get my, what is that? I've got another one here. Sorry about the noise. So what I'm going to do is bring in my paint mat and I want some just kitchen sponges will do and I just cut these up. These are just washing up sponges that I use. Let me just get and then I'm just going to use this neat straight from the pot. I'm not going to add water to this and I'm just going to put a little bit on my sponge. Of the seize the day and then townhouse teal so you've got a nice contrast with these okay and then I'm going to now you probably can't see that too well because it's flat matte black but I want to just line up where the stenciling was there we go okay Again, you can take that down if you want, just with a bit of masking tape. And then what I want to do is I just want to gently put a little bit of texture on here. And I want it to be quite, oh, what's the word, sort of contrasty. Okay, so you get quite a different contrasting colour coming through. There we go. So just like that. So it's really quite dotty, not solid in colour. And then I'm going to just move this up. Excuse me, I'll just might get my head in the way. There we go. then a little bit of the darker blue and can you see how the black gets um, left behind so it looks like black mortar which is really lovely so I've actually done that on on the others as well so I've gone around all four walls and I've done the same on that so let's just give that a wipe. So leave those to dry. Let me just put the lids on these for the moment. And then all we're going to do is leave that to dry for a moment. And I just want to bring these in because originally I wanted to do some um, crack on glaze on these. And then I remembered we didn't have any in stock. <laughs> And then Ella's just told me that we do actually have some in stock, so I can do them if I want. So what I'm going to do is I am going to actually do the crack on glaze, but you'll have to just bear with me while I prepare these. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint these. I've already got gesso on these. I'm going to paint these with clotted cream, which is um, a new matte paint, which is gorgeous. It's thick it's beautiful and it's that lovely sort of yellowy creamy color of um you know devonshire cornish clotted cream and this is one that i was going to do like that but i'm not anymore so let me just repaint this one so these are the little picket fences that we've got, which are just gorgeous. So I'll just finish this one off. Just do all the inside bits as well. Let me just take off some of that paint. There we go.
Okay, just let that dry over there. Alrighty. Right, so the next stage is let's get a clean dry brush, a completely different one. Could the house be used as a real bird's house outside? It can actually, yes. It can. Um because it's um it's made out of marine um medite, so it can actually go outside. So once you've painted it, um inside and out, make sure you do all the edges like I've said, with gesso first and then with paint. Um uh, just give it a coat of um varnish. Um um, outside varnish and you're good to go but yes absolutely because um yeah it's it's made out of marine um medite as well lovely okay so let me just grab this oh elbow could you just plug in my um pew pew weapon, weapon. <laughs> my weapon and i'm going to be using the crack on glaze on these Thank you very much. <laughs> and I just want to dry these two off here. You're in. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. Right, so with the crack on glaze, what you need to do is make sure that you've got some acrylic paint. It won't work with metallic paint and it won't work with gesso because the ingredients in it. So you just need, it's very, very fluid, so you only need a thin coat. And I'm just going to do round the outside of the window frames. I'm not going inside, I'm not doing the edges and I'm just I'm just doing those outer edges there. So just a thin coat will do. You don't need lows, it's not going to make any difference. It'll just take longer to dry. So all the way around these. So this um, crack on glaze will give you instant results. So you don't have to wait 24 hours and put another coat on. It's not like crackler. Um, this will happen really, really quickly. I'm going to do the window boxes stroke lintels. And these are all going to be the same colour as well. So the base colour is the colour of the cracks and then the colour that we put on top is going to be the majority of the um, covering but you'll see what I mean. Right let's just get this on. This will be tricky to do because it's it's a little bit fiddly the, um, the fencing so it'll be interesting to see how it turns out actually. So this dries fairly quickly again, so you don't have to wait hours for it. Teresa says magic. <laughs> it is a bit magic this, it's gorgeous. I mean, I think um, the instructions do tell you to wait a while, but I just wait until it's literally just dry. We'll just can't get there we go okay so it's just one part and as I say look at that <laughs> I've been using it for such a long time and I've hardly used any it's just really big pot that which is great clean your brush off so that your brush is clean and dry and then we'll have to we'll put those to dry a moment and we'll come back to those so these are already dry so if you remember we would we've gessoed those and we've 
done our sponging on there and then I want to do a further bit of sponging as well because I want to tie in our third colour, our pheasant bronze um, or some sort of metallic. So let's get another little bit of sponge and let's use our pheasant bronze and I'm using a different brush just to put a little bit on here and I'm using it neat I'm not putting any water on this and then I only want to put like a touch just just here and there There we go. So you can just see just a hint of the metallic, which is lovely. And then let's get the other pieces that I've already done. And let's get the stencil back on there. And again, let's have a little bit just here and there. Move my stencil up and let's have just a tad. So it just adds a little bit of interest. Um, and then on my background piece, this is the back of the house. It's lovely. And you can see that I've already stuck on Hog, just to see what it look like. There we go. So again, just a hint. I think that really just set it off. And then what I've done is, I've just got the. Um, oops, where's it gone? There it is. I've taken this piece and I've gessoed it, and then I've actually. Um, painted this in the pheasant bronze as well and I've stuck that on the front of the house like so and then I've just painted in here rather than put the bricks I've just painted a solid colour and that was in the seas the blue uh, sing the blues okay so it all sort of ties in okay let me just put those to one side so now I need to do the roof. Let's put those to one side. So the roof, I'm going to do the same technique. So I'm going to find my stencil line. There we go. And to make this a little bit different, I want to use um, a metallic blue that's very similar to the Sing the Blues. This is called Kingfisher Blue, so it should tie in quite nicely with all the other colours. So I wanted the roof to look a little bit different. And I also wanted to um, give the roof a bit of um, a separate colour as well. So I've actually gone for uh, Brass Monkey because this is sort of like a a greeny gold, um, the brass. It's a real sort of brass colour. So again, let me just take a little bit of this on here. Just a tiny bit will do. And I'll actually start at the top there. Let me just align that. Sorry if my head's in the way. I just need to line that up. You're all good. There we go. And then I'm going to come in with the Kingfisher. Just put a tiny weeny bit on there. Have we got any questions, Elbel? No, I think everyone's just happy watching. They've said they're loving your brickwork. Dee says, love this product. I think that was about our crack on glaze. 
Mm -hmm. Don't forget about the special offers that are on. Oh yes, go on, tell us about the special offers then, Elbel. So we've obviously still got a magazine, so if you haven't got it, make sure you get it, because once it's gone, it's gone. So How much can, is that? That is £14.99. pence. That's brilliant, actually. That's really good price. And then everything else that's new, so the three stamps, your birdhouse and your stencils, that's all for just £65. Mm -hmm. You've got your birdhouse with stencils as a bundle as well, which is on the screen, so that's just £24. And then you've got your stamp bundle of your Wizard of Oz um themes oh i love those i love the wizard of oz ones i've had so much fun what i've actually done is i've um done our little dorothy and i've cut her out and colored her in and i'll show you later what i'm going to do with her now i've just remembered that you shouldn't really force dry this so i'm like i've just gone and force dried it that was a bit silly of me. I wonder whether it's going to work. So we'll soon find out, won't we? I was looking at me like, really? Did you really do that? <laughs> you see, this is it. I shouldn't change my mind from the original plan. Um, so I'm going to use uh, Sing the Blues, okay? So with this, you've got one shot at it. Um, the thing is, it reacts, if it's going to work, it reacts straight away, okay? So you've only got one sweep of your, your brush, so just make sure it's nicely loaded up, okay? And let's just pray that this is actually going to work, because, as I say, I shouldn't have forced dried it. So here we go anyway, so... Is it going to work? You're just painting it blue. <laughs> Am I just painting it blue? Is it the right side? <laughs> it's not going to work, is it? Is it because you heated it? Yeah, it's because I heated it. Uh, you should let it dry naturally. Can you put another layer on? Yeah, I can. Right, I'll do that. Let me just scrape that off. I'm not going to waste that. Okay, I'll just wipe that off for a start. And let's just get that painted again. Well, at least now you know what not to do. Exactly. <laughs> Do as I say, not as I do. Absolutely. <laughs> I should have stuck to the original plan, shouldn't I? Right, okay, let's just put a lid on that. Let's get my crack on glaze back and let's get a clean brush. Okay, so crack on glaze. So let's get some crack on glaze on these again. So this time I'm putting them on my desk and I'm just going to have to be patient. There we go, let's put those over there and I'll have to wait until I've put everything together and I've done my birdie. There we go. So again, just a thin layer-ish. Okay, where's the one that I've just painted? Is that dry? Okay, alrighty. So leave those dry naturally, <laughs> she says about for the fifth time. 
she says that's what you tell us all at the retreat it's true <laughs> it's true <laughs> i should do what i actually <laughs> teach shouldn't i really <laughs> okay so um here's our little birdie and i've already um painted him with the gesso let me just clean my brushes a minute there we go don't forget to like comment share subscribe if you're on youtube mm -hmm. all the good stuff <laughs> hit the bell if you're yeah. on youtube for your notifications definitely right so um i think with this we might actually use some kingfisher blue and a bit of pheasant bronze seeing as those are the colors that we're going with at the moment and i'm going to use um quite a nice round small brush this is a number three from our paint set and i'm just going to dip it straight in and take a bit off because i want to actually use the shape of the brush to create sort of the feathers so I'm just going to place them on in fact if I do it on the paper and show you so I'm going to do little shapes like this all the way up so you can see that I'm making like feather marks with it and there's quite a bit of paint on there so that it creates a, a bit of texture as well I did like the way Kerry did hers. She actually used um, Glorious UT and that looked amazing. Um, and you can see how she did that in the magazine. So I'm doing that all the way up the body and then I'm going to swap to the pheasant bronze and do a little bit of its tummy and I'm not worried that the colours are mixing because I think that looks quite quite nice and then I'm going to come over the head and finish off with a bit on the beak I know it won't focus up close like this, but at least you can see the um, the texture of it. Okay, that's the little birdie. Of course, you could stencil a design on there. You could do some uh, gilding wax with your gilding gum. You could do all sorts of techniques with that. Bit of flake. Oh yeah, a bit of flake would be lovely, wouldn't it? Mm. Actually. Yeah, that'd be gorgeous. Let me just check on these. No, they're still quite wet, those. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is just clean this up. So this is the base. I've actually just painted this with the pheasant bronze. I've obviously got dirty hands. Look at the state of that. Um, and then I'm going to start... Um, constructing so the first thing is you need to know where everything goes so obviously these side pieces fit together with the end piece like so and then that goes on top of the base so I'm going to actually get my rub and go and this is exactly what we made it for in fact, what I'll do is I'll do the roof first because then I can lean it over there. I'm just going to put the roof together. So that's at a 45 degree angle. So that's super easy to work out. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue down there and in here. And it's okay if it squishes out because we can just line it up. And if you use the base, move Birdie out of the way. If you use the base as a guide, because it is a 90 degree angle, 
like this. Can you see the base would fit in there like that? And that's a 90 degree angle. All right, you can see it better like that. All right, and then I can just put that on my desk to dry out. I just want to check that I have actually got my 90 degree angle. I have. And then we're going to do our first corner. So if you just put it together like that, you can see where you need to put the glue, which is just just long here, just a small amount. I'm just sort of spreading it out. I'm not squeezing the bottle at all. And that fits in nicely there. There we go. Maybe should have put a bit of glue on the other side as well, but that's fine. And you just want to hold it there for maybe about five seconds or so. Lovely. Now let's get the other two. And that's going to go there and there. So if I put a little bit, this is the bit that I missed out. There and there. And there. Yeah, just make sure that I'm actually putting it on the right side. There we go. And just hold that together. Just wipe the excess glue off there and just hold that in position for a few seconds there we are now can you see that all that excess glue all you need to do is just get a damp brush and just wipe that up and then clean your brush straight away Alrighty. we just want to hold it in position for a wee bit until that's just grabbed nicely and then Let's get it on this side, shall we? Oops, quite a bit of glue there. And on this side here. Lorna's just joined us. Hi Lorna darling. Thanks for joining us. I think she's got a sleepover chair. How you got your hot chocolate ready? Oops. So this is you need to watch what you're doing, not have a chat with the person next to you. There we go. And if that happens, maybe I should put it on the base and then that's gonna be a bit more secure, isn't it? Well, oops, wrong way around. Let's get it on the because uh, it is an oblong, it's not a square, it's an oblong. There we go. And don't worry about the excess glue because that will actually um, dry completely clear. There we go. And then just get a wet, a damp brush, not a wet brush, a damp brush, just to clean up some of the edges. And let's do this one now. And it helps if I put the glue on the right side. There we are. Oh, it's so cute. Um, sorry that you can't 
see exactly what I'm doing at the moment. But Janet's just joined and her birdhouse kit's arriving tomorrow. Oh, fantastic. So you'll be able to watch back and have a play along. Oh, that looks so cute. Love it. Oh, that's brilliant. That looks so good. Right, I'll just leave that to one side for a few minutes just to firm up before um, I start picking it up. And then, hopefully, these should be... Yes, they're dry! That one looks a little bit damp. That's a little bit sticky. That's a little bit sticky. And that. Okay, in that case, let's put let's put Dorothy in. So Dorothy is going to be I won't show you just yet. She's going to be looking out of one of the windows. Georgina says, can you use rice papers to decorate the inside? Oh my goodness, That'd be yes. That would so nice. That would be beautiful. I think I'll have a clear out that window. So I'm doing this off camera, but I will show you in a moment um, when I can pick it up. I think I need just a tiny, tiny, tiny touch of blue just on there. But yes, yeah, so I would... Um, I would gesso it with white gesso, um, the inside, and then that way you'll be able to see all the beautiful patterns of your rice paper. Oh my goodness, Dorothy looks amazing. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. It's like a tease. No one can see what we're on about. I know. <laughs> we'll show you in a minute. We'll show you in a minute. Okay. Okay. So, um, I just wipe it down. Okay, so what did we say we we're going to do with this? Are we going to go for the um, the blue, the dark, sing the blues? Should we go for that one? Yes. Do you want to go for that one, or do you want to go for the light blue, which is ten out of teal? I think maybe the dark. Don't you, don't you think, Elba? I was going to say the light. Oh, were you? <laughs> yes. Okay, we'll go with the light, which, funnily enough, is the colour of my studio, isn't it, mm. on the outside? Yeah. How weird is that? I hope I've got enough paint because this is, like, right at the bottom. Okay, what's dry? That's a bit sticky. Okay, let's try. That's a bit sticky. Let's try with this. Please work. Please work. Yep, it's crackling. Thank goodness. Oh, D said dark. <laughs> D said dark. Sorry, D. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's crackling. Oh, cool. I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. I shouldn't mess with it, really, Kay, but I can't help myself. I'm just going to get rid of some of that paint out of, out of there. Oh, <gasps> yeah. Okay, I'll hold that up to the main camera in a minute when that's when that's dried off. Okay, next one. A bit too much there. Okay, so you need one swipe. One swipe. One swipe. And one swipe. Tough if I've left a bit undone. Yay, it's cracking. Excellent. It worked. <laughs> so, do as I say, not as I do. Do not force dry it. Just leave it to do it dry naturally. I mean, it didn't take long, did it, actually? What, 10 minutes? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
There we go. Next one. So Lorna said, can't wait to join you for crafting live. <gasps> yeah. yeah. That's brilliant. Thank you, Lorna, for, you know, agreeing to come all this way, which is a few hundred miles. I think it's at least 200 miles, isn't it? Um, to join us at crafting live and what a treat you are all going to get because Lorna is going to treat uh, to take the workshops um which are just fantastic so you will just um love having her teach you i'm going to be demonstrating on the stand um as well so thank you lorna for traveling the miles to come and see us and she said do i bring tarquins uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> Of course. Yes, please. Yeah. The 750 mile round trip. No way. That's 323 miles. 20. Wow. Good job with paying your petrol money, isn't it? <laughs> oh my God, this looks brilliant. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that is so good. So good. Now I can force dry it. Once it's cracked, I can, I can actually just finish it off um, by doing that. Right, so we have one roof. Let's just clean off that glue. Excellent. And that's going to be our lid. That needs to dry off a little bit more. Sorry, I'm doing this off camera. That is not a good idea, Kay, because no one can see what you're doing. Right, so I need to glue these on. Also, um, I need to glue on some of the... Let me just move that out of the way. Let those dry off. Um, look at this. Doesn't this look cool? So I've got this little ring here, which um, I've done in the pheasant bronze, and that's going to go on on there. Don't mind the bit of glue. I've got this fleur de lis. This was from um, the kit, the big frame kit. What's it called, Ella? The big frame big frame gothic frame shelf. shelf gothic shelf kit it was out of there good grief and that's um that's what that's from but you can use anything can't you and then this is the little bit of dowling that is going to go into the birdhouse And that's going to go in here. And that is a perfect fit. That's lovely. Oh, I should have put that in last because I've got the other side to do. Can you see what I mean? So um, I thought it'd be nice to have some um, some bits and pieces in here, going up here. Yeah, let's have that on. So let's put this on. Um, these are just some cogs that I had left over. These are woodology as well. You can actually buy them just a pack of um, woodology. Um, I think that'll go round about there. Again, just hold that baby on there. And what did I do with those? Um, 
just show you that really quickly, can't I? Let me just um, hold that on for a second. And let me just stick this one on and I can show you. It was super simple, dead easy. Um, let's have that one about there. Because you know me, I like a bit of cogs. So yeah, so this was from a cogs kit and I had a few left over and they were sat on my desk for ages and I thought, I really need to use those. They're bugging me, but they're still on my desk. Is it from the clock? It was, um, it was from the clock kit, yeah. yeah. And uh, the, the bag of um, woodology cogs. Small cogs. Yeah. So all I did with, um, with that was I just literally used whatever I had left over. There, there we've just got a bit of brass monkey on that one. And left a bit of the black showing. And then I used the tan house teal because that looks like, and just dabbed on a little bit of that because that just looks a little bit like verdigris. Literally, that's that's all I did. Just that. Left a bit of black. Super easy. Okay. So where we're at with this. So we've got some cogs on there. We've got the front on. We've got that on. So let's just see whether these, these look a little bit we haven't got the bird on yet and um, we just need to put these on so and what would look really nice is if we had flowers coming out but I didn't have time to do those Because Lorna's online, I have to say pew pew, pew pew. It's my pew pew gun. Stop moving. Go. Oh, she's going for the chocolate biscuits, <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> She's going for the chocolate biscuits. Oh, there's two in the packet as well. But how come that? She put the thing through the bag. That's really clever. Can you hear a rustling? That rustling noise is Ella tasting the chocolate biscuits, Wendy. She's very grateful for, um, for you sending those. I like jelly babies. I'm just putting it out there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I like lint bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> the milk chocolate ones. Yeah. We've still got the dark chocolate ones in the cupboard for for me, haven't we? Yeah. We haven't eaten them yet. I had actually today I bought some let me move this over a bit. I did buy some um oat milk. And I was thrilled to bits because they came in a small carton because I hate buying the oat milk because it comes in a great big carton and then I hardly use it and I have to throw it away so I'll stop buying it. So these are just small ones so I am definitely going to have a hot chocolate tonight. Mm. So do you want um, a flower box? No, I think we're going to go for a lintel. So we're going to pop that on there. Lorna says, I know Wendy's game, trying to get in the boss's good books. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Listen, you girls are always in my good books. <laughs> you do an amazing job for us. <laughs> oh, that looks so sweet, doesn't it? That's cute. Yeah, so just hold it on for a few seconds just to give it time to grab that's it and then look look there she is there's wendy 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 dorothy even oh i tell you what i did forget i forgot to put the um the little picket fence on there we go <laughs> what's that <laughs> 
<laughs> Lorna said, Kay, we all know Ella is the boss. <laughs> <laughs> In many ways, that is true. Oh, Elle's gone quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, is it because you've got a mouthful of chocolate? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are they good? Yeah, they're really nice. Have they got a caramel in? Mm. <gasps> I like really? Oh, I like caramel. There's one left. What, you're actually going to share? Well, I just, I've had two chocolate bars. <laughs> <laughs> now that you're full up. Yeah. <laughs> No, you can save it for your snack tomorrow, darling. Yeah. I'm gonna um I'm gonna have a hot chocolate. Okay, so there's our little Dorothy. I do love those Dorothy stamps. They're just so cute. And there's the window. I know how to treat you, Alfie's not going to be impressed though. <laughs> you see Lorna's comment. What did Lorna say? I was a bouncer and a bailiff, but Ella terrifies me at all the time. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> so just hold it down for about five seconds and you should be good to go. I love that sweet little Dorothy on there. Right, so we have, let me just oh, force that around a little bit. So all we have got left to do is put the birdie on. So let me just show you around. So we have the back, the side, the front, and the other side with Dorothy. And we have the roof that goes on the top. But I'm not going to stick mine down because I'm going to use it as a lid to put all my bits and pieces in. Or even some stamps, actually. Oh, that is so cute. Right, shall we um, swap to the um, face forward one, Ella, and I'll show everyone this. Here we go, guys. Oh, birdie. Hang on. <laughs> we can't have a bird house without a bird. Let me just pop him on there. There we go. So, there we are. Come on, focus. And then we've got Dorothy looking out. She needs to get out before the uh, hurricane. Uh, Typhoon comes. <laughs> and there we go. And let's lift the lid. So there we go. Oops. So very different from Kerry's, but it was such good fun making it. Really, really enjoyed making that. That was so good. Excellent. And we make a good team, don't we? Yeah. We should do it again. <laughs> don't tell that again. <laughs> Just oh, we might be watching. <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> no. Thanks ever so much for joining us. Really, really lovely to get all your comments and everything. And uh, thanks ever so much for um, your shares, your likes, and um, hit that that bell if you're on YouTube and thank you so much for your support we really appreciate it don't we we do yeah and Ellery appreciates the chocolate biscuits <laughs> well done <laughs> thanks very much and we'll see you next week bye for now bye